Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. I love surprises. I'm obsessed with surprises. I even worked on the show Friday Night Surprise for Dick Clark Productions. That's how much I love surprises. I also worked on his Super Blooper and New Practical Jokes prank show, which I think I told you before because I've done episodes on some of my favorite pranks. I love them. Not nasty pranks, but pranks that just make everybody laugh and have a good time. So I was thinking about the element of surprise and I have committed to throughout this whole 365 day podcast to take different episodes where we just work on little bits of wisdom and skills to improve your comic perspective because my comic perspective got me through three surgeries, 44 radiation treatments, and over two and a half years of chemotherapy. And when they told me that I only had a few years left to live because my cancer had metastasized, that resiliency that I built up from learning all of this comedy and all of these comic perspective techniques really pulled me through. It helps build your resiliency. So today, I want to talk about the element of surprise. And surprise is so important in comedy. It's why we laugh when a comedian takes us in one direction and then boom, sideswipes us with a thought about that topic that is not what we are expecting. So getting a cancer diagnosis when you're not expecting it is not funny. It is not funny. But if we can use this skill set to help us build our brain power for when things do ram us and we don't expect it, we can come back with this comic perspective to handle even the biggest negative surprises. Now, I like to use surprise in a positive way, but it actually builds a skill set so that when things that aren't so positive happen, you have a method to cope and to process that you develop through this comic perspective. So, you're going to get really good at when a comedian tells a joke, you're going to not fall for the trap of where you think the comedian's going. You're going to get really good at coming up with alternative pathways that the comedian thought of and tried to pick the best and the most heightened and the funniest one. You're going to have your brain bombard you with all different ideas and then you're going to get really good at picking the funniest. So let's just talk about surprise from a scientific point of view for a minute. Why does it feel so good? So I found this really interesting article from Harvard Business Review. Surprise is still the most powerful marketing tool. It's by Scott Reddick. And what was interesting about this article was he looks at surprise and behavior. So Scott states, surprise is addictive. Surprise is like crack for your brain. And where does he get this from? He's looking at some studies done at Emory and Baylor, where a neuroscientist actually suggests that people are designed to crave the unexpected based on the findings of a research study that they did. Now, Scott goes on to say that surprise introduces us to new stimuli, which we must then reconcile with shifts in our beliefs and behavior. 
This is exactly what I'm talking about, that by giving ourselves surprises and giving surprise to other people, it opens the pathway to shift our own beliefs about our own cancer and our survival and our own behavior about our cancer. Then there's this incredible quote by a neurosurgery assistant professor from Brown University, Wael Assad. And this professor says, it's been known for a long time that it's unexpected events in particular that drive learning. So if we want to unlock innovative strategies in terms of behavior, surprise is a great way to do it. Now, Redica is really aiming at consumer behavior, but I love taking concepts that are outside of the healthcare world and then bringing them in and disrupting the healthcare world, creating wellness and creating hope. And then there was another really cool study from a psychologist named Norbert Schwartz. And this study involved a dime near a copy machine. And what they found out was that just even finding a dime, having the surprise of finding a dime really changed people's perceptions. So what he's saying is surprise can be very cheap which is what I'm saying. Just by a little creativity, we can keep ourselves surprised and others surprised for a very long time. So then I found a book, The Power of Surprise by Michael Rossell on Amazon. And basically the premise of this is looking at the rich and complex nuances of the science of surprise and how we can strategically use this to enrich our lives. This is exactly what I'm saying. And in the book, Roussel actually looks at the way stand-up comedy uses it, the way film directors use it, the way novelists use it, the way playwrights use it. This is typical in entertainment. Think of magicians. Think of live entertainers. They use surprise to keep us engaged in what they want to keep us engaged in from an entertainment perspective. This is a pretty cool coping strategy. And I haven't read Rossell's book, but I'm actually going to order it because This is how I kept my spirits going while I was getting all this bad news about my cancer. Roussel draws on research from many different brain science disciplines, cognition, motivation, neuroscience, psychology, artificial intelligence, persuasion, evolution, and learning. Discovering this because I loved comedy and I loved surprise and I loved pranks really helped me apply it. And in Russell's book, his subtitle is How Your Brain Secretly Changes Your Beliefs. But he targets this element of surprise, saying that it can enrich our lives, create positive mindsets, and maximize influence. And that is exactly what I discovered when I started playing with surprise as a coping strategy. What I found was the more I studied comedy, the more I wrote comedy, the more I watched comedy, I became a master at looking at topics in a 360 way that elevated my thought process. And if I could let go of the stranglehold that cancer had on my body by using my mind to let go of the stranglehold that cancer has on your mind, then maybe I could change the way my body was dealing with cancer. Let me say that again. If I could change the way my mind thought about my cancer so I could look at it through this 360 degree view and I could write about it and think about it comedically, tumor humor, there's so many episodes on it. I did the huge tumor humor challenge. Then 
I could potentially change the way my body dealt with cancer and the way my body thought about the cancer that was really metastasizing throughout. What did I have to lose? Could I shift my mental perspective and then shift my body? And you know what? It has been 24 years since I was diagnosed, 30 years since I was misdiagnosed, and 21 years since I've been considered cancer-free with no visible disease. So it's not the only thing I did. I didn't just say, hey, I'm going to write comedy and I'm going to get through this and I'm not going to do anything. I did all the things that medical professionals suggested that I do until I could figure out how to reinvent my own immune system. And when they said, nothing is work, get your affairs in order, I had to go even more full throttle on how I was going to do this. Now, I threw a chemo comedy party, my first chemo treatment, which is why I started the Comedy Cures Foundation to help others not only entertain them while they were going through all of these cancer treatments, but also it was a surprise. No one ever expected comedians and a comedy event in the middle of a chemo room or in radiation or in hospice or in survivorship. It just wasn't the way several decades ago. So I got to bring my element of surprise to many other people going through treatment. And then once the word got out and the media started covering me doing this as a 98 pound bald cancer patient, they really jumped on and started to promote this way, this concept, my methods. And, you know, that's just gone global. So I've helped over a million people. But let's go back to the power of surprise. How can you use it in your everyday life so that you can get the benefits of surprise, but also give the benefits of surprise to other people? First of all, I love gentle pranks. And if you go back and you listen to any of the prank episodes, I give you lots of fun, good ideas for gentle pranks. You can make a pact with a friend or a loved one or somebody else going through chemo that once a month, you're going to alternate doing a prank on each other. And that moment when the prank is revealed, there is so much laughter and bonding in that. The other thing you can do is get a surprise buddy where you decide that you're going to surprise the person and it could be once a week, once a month, however you want to do it. You can have a little group and you can pull names out of a hat and then you each pull the surprise or give the surprise to somebody else in the group. So you each have somebody alternating, giving you surprises. You can also just make a list of really fun ideas. And there are websites all over that talk about surprises. And a lot of people align them to birthdays or anniversaries. And they don't have to be expensive. It could just be a little thing wrapped in a box. You can take an ad out on a bulletin board and it's on the path that the person drives on every day. Now that would be a little more expensive. You can show up unexpected. You can just send someone a letter, a card. That could be a little surprise. You can make a montage. It's really fun to send balloons or a pinata. You can decorate someone's door. That was really big when my daughter was growing up. You can bake someone something. You can hire a musician to play outside their home, setting up like a little movie night or getting comedy tickets to go to a comedy show. Some people think of much more practical gifts like filling the gas tank up and saying, hey, I filled your tank up for you. Now, how can you be more surprised? Hmm. 
you can actually pay someone to set up a bunch of surprises for you and give them a small budget and just say, surprise me. I loved doing surprises in my chemo room, in the radiation waiting room. And again, I didn't spend a lot of money. I went on Oriental Trading Company or on some of these websites that just sell closeouts. And I would buy just a bulk of things and give them out. As I said, I've baked for people in the waiting room with low sugar content. I love doing surprises within the cancer ecosystem because people never, ever, ever expect anything good to happen there. So it's magnified. The feeling of euphoria and surprise is magnified when you do it in a place where you're disrupting what would normally be very typical or very painful. And again, there's a lot of science behind surprise. And I want to be the story starter for you. I want you to start thinking about your cancer journey in a different way. And that's why every day the episodes are so different on Beating Cancer Daily, because I don't want you to get in the habit of just thinking, oh, I'm going to tune in and Saren's just going to teach me X. Some days episodes are motivational. Some days they're inspirational. Some days they're very strategic. Some days they're just funny. Some days they are so full of facts and ways that you can improve the quality of your health and the quality of your life. Those are my longer episodes with some of my experts like Jackie Bryan, who you meet her through Beating Cancer Daily, but you also can hear a lot from her on our Health Builder series. And every month we do a different Health Builder topic because I just always want to be giving you something that's new and innovative and exciting for you to integrate into your wellness platform. So I hope you enjoyed this. I love surprising people and I love getting surprises. So if you have a good one, go to comedycares.org and hit the record button and let me know if you have some fun surprises that I can start doing or you can do a surprise for me. I would love that. Or write me a note through the contact button and tell me about your best surprises that you've received or that you've given. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you guys know this, but Beating Cancer Daily is a listener and donor supported podcast and community. So if you have some extra change, I'd love you to go to comedycures.org and make a donation today of whatever level is comfortable for you. And it will be tax deductible to the extent allowed by law because Comedy Cures is a nonprofit 501c3 organization founded from my chemo chair, April 1999, and we've been going strong ever since. So please consider making a donation today and help our community and this podcast thrive. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.